Hey, what's up developers? Today we're gonna answer questions from you guys. We're gonna look through the comments that I've gotten recently and we're just gonna talk a little bit about Vue.js so make sure you guys stay all the way to the end. Let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer with several years of software development experience, and I'm the author of the Vue.js in Action book. And actually, it has the forward by Chris Fritz with Benjamin Liswan. So if you guys are interested, I have a link in the description below. If you click on it, you can get the first chapter of this book for free, which is awesome. And then I'll start sending you really cool, anytime I upload videos or I have some stuff happening, I'll let you guys know. So yeah, make sure you check out that link in the description. All right, so I went ahead and just opened up my YouTube and I'm just looking through my comments here. I haven't screened all these, but I think they are okay to show here, but if they aren't, I'll probably edit this later. So I thought I would just go through some of this and I'll riff on these and we'll just talk about it for a few minutes. So the first question, well, the first comment I got is, great video, man. Thanks for taking time to show us. Cheers from Guadalajara. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually do a lot of Spring Boot um, Java development. I did it for a number of years before I got into web development. In fact, while I was learning web development, I was a full, full-time full Java developer. And so I, I kind of have this interesting background where I didn't go, I didn't jump straight into web development after college. I kind of really, I feel like I'm almost like the self-taught web developer. I learned nothing about web development in college. I taught myself everything. And uh, right now, actually I do, I'm a full stack software developer, but I'm, I mostly work on the front end right now in my day job. I've been doing that for uh, well over a year now. And uh, so uh, I did do a few videos on Spring Boot. A lot of people think Java is very complicated. It's actually a lot simpler than a lot of people think. .NET and Java are great platforms for the back end. And so if you guys are interested, I have a really cool Spring Boot series. In fact, I kind of want to do a few more uh, in the future. So the next comment, here, I'll thumb up this, thanks. So the next comment I have here is, I'm actually self-taught right now. I consider myself to have the level of a junior web developer and this job is hard. You're basically building machines and you have to think a lot on a logical way. It's a frustrating job and you spend a lot of time just fixing your own errors. Also, it's a very stressful job because if something goes wrong, it's on you, but I find it very enjoyable and fulfilling. I'll make this a little bigger so we can see it. Yeah, that's, this video I did is five reasons why you shouldn't become a software developer. It's actually quite controversial. And uh, a lot of people commented on that. So, you know, I'll just give a thumbs up to that. Thank you for that comment. It is very difficult. I did a, a, a video on the the Web Developer 2019 Bootcamp. You can see here, uh, this one right here. So I was kind of going over different courses and there's Angela's course and Colt Steele's course. And this Dwayne said, I've done all the cold steel courses, have done the later portion of Angelus. I can't say I have a preference. The best thing would be one to use to reinforce what has learned from with other, albeit from different perspectives. In short, wait for the sales and just get both. Thank you, Colt and Angela. You're two of the best teachers I've had in my coding journey. And thank you, Eric, I'm working my way through Vue.js and Action Books. Well, awesome. Thanks. So yeah, uh, yeah, those cold steels course and Angela's course, you don't know, I'll open up here in a new tab. It's normally 199. So, there's the complete developer 2019 web development bootcamp by Angela Yu. And she actually has taught boot camps in person. And she put a pretty huge course together, like 30, 40 hours, I think, of content. And I did a quick review on it. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link in the description below. But a lot of people liked this video and it was kind of fun just making it and talking about the courses and then comparing contrast Cold Steel's course to Angela's course. And I, I think either one of them works fine. They'll be great for either one of them uh, if you decide to take either one. Do you have any tutorials for setup web development environments in Windows 10? So I haven't, I actually a long time ago, I created a video on how to install Windows 10 for, um, uh, to create, to install Bash for Windows. So if you don't know in Windows 10, you could actually install your own, uh, your own Linux subsystem right now. And so the, for many, many years, people hated 
on Windows for development, especially web development. A lot of people really disliked it and for good reason because the tools and maybe some of the some of the programs didn't work as well. But now nowadays Visual Studio Code works great. Both platforms, Node has evolved that so you can install Node really easily in Windows or on Mac. I'd still recommend, if you can, to install Windows Subsystem for Linux. That's the way I do it. I have Visual Studio Code, and then I basically have, it's almost like a VM on your Windows box that runs Linux, and it's it's great. I mean, I've had a few issues, but I think they fixed most of them, and I'll include a link to this in the description below to install it. I actually did a video on this once, but uh, these the video is a little outdated. This is the new way to do it. Basically, you open up PowerShell, you type in this command, and then you can choose which Linux distro you want to install. When I did it, I was stuck with Ubuntu, but now it looks like you can do OpenSUSE, uh, SUSE Linux, Debian, Kali, and then it looks like it's really simple to do. So just follow those instructions. You can install the distro, and once you get it, I would install NVM, which is the Node version manager, install the latest version of Node, and then install all the tools that you normally would do. So if you're in React, install your React CLI. If you're in, if you're doing Vue.js, Vue CLI, Angular, NG. So you would just install your command line tools. Everything should work correctly. If you do receive any weird node module errors when you're trying to start or stop, you can then usually Google those and if someone else has Windows Subsystem for Linux and you have that node error, you can usually figure it out. I think I had a few problems like that last year. I haven't had many this year because it's almost exactly a same copy. It's not Mac, so it's not, the, it's not a Mac version, but usually all these tools work well on Linux versions. And, and if you don't want to do the Windows Subsystem Linux, just download Node for Windows and you'll be fine too. So maybe I'll, I'll create a video in the future. Let me leave a comment below if you want me to create a video on how to get a set up a development environment for Windows. I would tell you mostly hit download Visual Studio Code, download Windows uh, Subsystem for Linux, and you know, voila. See my video response. All right. Nice video. Thumbs up for the effort. But the Blazor as the new... But with Blazor as the new player, the node modules directory and the readme files with instructions on how to bake a cake will be burned into the ground. So I haven't heard of Blazor. So I will Google it. So this is kind of interesting. Build a web UI with C Sharp. So I wonder if this is what he's talking about. Some full stack web development with C Sharp. I haven't done any videos on, on C Sharp or web development or doing anything with that. That's kind of interesting. Uh, something may I, I I think if I am gonna do more back-end web development videos, I'm probably gonna do it on Node and Java with Spring. But uh, it's cool to know that Blazor's there. I think this is uh, very interesting what he says. Can somebody answer me? What is the value of a four-year degree? I spent four years learning to code in college, and most of my learning comes from the internet. Now I doubt myself. <laughs> uh, okay, so. This is a video where uh, I did a couple of years ago. Now, God, it's been a while, maybe a year ago. So there was, uh, I was talking, I was talking to another YouTuber and they put in how self-taught developers are getting beat up by people who have degrees. And so I made a response video saying, well, it's not that black and white, you know, self-taught developers get beat up, but so do people who have degrees get beat up. Sometimes self-taught developers think that we wasted our time. And my point of the video was that it doesn't matter if you have a degree or you don't have a degree, you know, there's all levels of skill. You don't have to have one. It helps with some people. I, I think it's an unfair advantage if you do have one, because unfortunately we live in a world where hiring managers and especially people who don't have a lot of experience already, when they go get it, when they go try to get a job, they might not even be able to get an interview unless they have a degree. And that means you might have to go and get a job at a place that maybe is a little smaller that really uh, don't doesn't pay as well and so th to answer his question i mean this is kind of baiting me <laughs> for this but there's a, there's plenty of of reason why you should get a four-year degree beyond just learning how to program there's the connections you can make in college there's the uh like i said getting past the hr managers when you're trying to get land that first job 
it's a lot of people to go to college just to figure out what they want to do. Not everybody knows that they want to be doing computer science or in programming. I've heard of people who just hate being in front of a computer all day, and that's probably not being a web developer or programmer is not the way to do it. There's also um, some avenues that are very difficult to be self-taught in that have to deal with computers. If you're doing with AI or uh, machine learning or electrical engineering and it's it's a more difficult road and splash and if you're trying to get into one of these big companies like apple or google if you have the experience and you're well known yes you can get in there without a degree it's not you know you don't have to have it of course but if you're out of college and you have no experience um, you don't, you never went to college it's going to be more difficult to get into some of these programs so i mean we can unpack that a lot but i'll leave it there see my video response all right thank you i'm seeing tanks as thanks i'll say i'll do a couple more of these awesome tutorial thanks for showing us yep if you don't know you can go to start.spring.io start.spring.io is a really cool starter when you start a spring uh, spring project there do that spring project thank you god bless you appreciate it uh Macross, not Macross. It's the anime, otherwise. Yeah, I actually, uh, you know, I my my geek card is pretty full because I am I used to be really into anime, or you know, if you're from Japan, anime, and I used to read a little bit of manga, and I used to watch Naruto, and and uh, I occasionally may watch them every now and then, uh, here and then, now and there. But a very, not, not not much anymore, but I think it's, you know, very cool. And I like the, the naming they did behind it. And I guess it is Macross. I think I actually watched some Macross back in the day. It's been a while. I have lost, not really understand how slot reel works. Uh, so in my last video on view 2.6, I talked a little bit about slots. So there's this new syntax you can do with slots. If you don't know what slots are in Vue.js, it's, a way you can get information from your parent component and then basically include it into the child component without sending it through props. You can also take information from your child component and display it in the parent component. And in other languages, you might hear something called transclusion. But uh, this, I did a little bit of a quick tutorial on this. I actually had the gist in the description below so you guys could take a look at it in that video. If you haven't you don't know about this video, I'll, I'll make sure it's linked in the description below. But 2.6 came out to have this new slot version way of doing things. And I explained in this video. What I want to do is uh, to do this justice. I was thinking about trying to crank it out tonight. I've actually been pretty busy the last few days. But I think what I'm going to do is maybe later this week or next week, I will uh, create a more longer more complete slot v slot uh, this is really exciting i'm sure for some people uh tutorial and uh, what i want to do though is, is make it worth it and i just want to put some more thought into it so this is a good idea i will probably create a beginner slot video later in the future i love clicky keyboards uh, so if you don't know i actually have a new mechanical keyboard so you can hear it here uh, it's a corsair gaming keyboard i thought it would actually be quieter than it was and it isn't it's pretty loud and so i am not sure what i want to do with it i might some people extremely hate the clicky noises when i'm typing other people sort of like it um, some people are ambivalent i think the majority of people are on the fence and probably don't like it so if you guys let me know in the comments below do you guys like clicky keyboards do you not like clicky keyboards I might have to figure out to get a new keyboard or I might I might try to fight, find a way to like to make the sound less clicky so people don't hear this all the time. Okay, last one I'll see please use two space to do video indented two spaces instead of four. I don't know what this means, so we'll we'll skip this one. <laughs> and I got a little criticism. I never understood people. Oh, this will be my last comment I'll talk to you guys about. I never understood people who type faster than they can without mistyping every word and retyping. Why don't just slow down to speed at which makes much less errors? You're just throwing your finger joints. 
So uh, I, I'll have an excuse to this. This is a brand new keyboard and I am still not quite as good with it as I was with my last keyboard. The keys are erased a little bit differently. Uh, I know that's kind of an excuse. So, And oftentimes when I do these videos, I wanna try to do the typing as fast as I can because people don't like to watch me type. In fact, I know a couple other people who do these type of videos who either do voiceovers so you don't hear the key keyboard clicking at all and they can fast forward over different sections or they do like undos which i tried once on a different video so i might try to do something like that but i rather try to just you know show you i can really quickly get this app up and running and i fortunately made too many errors and i made a mistake there and i'm not perfect so next time my next video i'll do some live coding uh, live edited coding for you guys. I'll be a little bit more careful with my typing. All right, so that is my question and answer comment views for today. I think it's gone about 15 minutes already, man. Time flies. So leave a comment below. You know, I had some questions about the clicky keyboard. Also, I'd love to hear what videos, I and mean, for, for you guys that have made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. I'd like to know what videos you, would you like to see me do next? Uh, what what topics are you interested in? I know I heard some people talk about slots. I know I've had some more people talked about. I haven't completed my series on headless CMSs. I did like two or three videos and then I kind of got distracted. I didn't go back to those. Some people still want WordPress CMSs. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I actually have been thinking about doing another giveaway. I don't think I'm going to do a giveaway this video, but if you let me know in the comments below, I'd really just appreciate what, what you guys are looking for next. And uh, thanks. I appreciate it.